Hello everyone, the Lord be with you and also with you. Today I'm just going to read and reflect on the gospel passage set for today because it's central to our Christian faith. It's about who Jesus is. And so here it is. Listen to the good news proclaimed in John's Gospel, chapter 10, reading verses 31 to 42. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Again, the Jews picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many great miracles from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? We're not stoning you for any of these, replied the Jews, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I have said you are gods? If he called them gods to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. What about the one whom the Father set apart as his very own and sent into the world? Why then do you accuse me of blasphemy because I said, I am God's son. Do not believe me unless I do what my father does. But if I do it, even though you do not believe me, believe the miracles that you may know and understand that the father is in me and I in the father. Again, they tried to seize him, but he escaped their grasp. And then Jesus went back across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing in the early days. Here he stayed, and many people came to him. They said, Though John never performed a miraculous sign, all that John said about this man was true. And in that place, many believed in Jesus. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. We are at the end of Jesus' public ministry here and we find the Jewish leaders once again unable to accept who Jesus is. In verse 30 he says to them, I and the Father am, are one. And this is blasphemy to them. And they pick up stones to stone him. But he speaks to them again. And it's as if he's giving them one last chance. We remember that the whole thrust of John's gospel is to prove who Jesus is. And he says right at the end of the gospel in chapter 20, verse 31. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. And in the rest of this passage, we see that Jesus' words, his works, his person, John the Baptist's testimony and scripture all show him to be God. God incarnate, the word made flesh. Jesus begins by quoting Psalm 82. And here in the psalm, the psalmist referred to judges as gods with a little g. Not because they were divine in some sense, but because they were acting for God in their role as judges. Those words of Jesus has, have been paraphrased as, if mere men can be called gods because of their position as judges, then how much more should I whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world, be called the Son of God. Leon Morris adds to this, Jesus is not classing himself among men. He separates and distinguishes himself from men. So both here and consistently through the Gospel of John, Jesus' words show that he is God. And if that is not enough, look at his work, his healing and his miracles. And then we look at his person. 
the Jewish leaders were trying to seize him, but he just escaped them and crossed the Jordan. It reminds me of the time when he walked through that baying crowd in Nazareth at the beginning of his ministry as they wanted to throw him off the cliff and he just disappeared. He must have had such an aura, a presence about him, that his enemies didn't dare touch him until he allowed himself to be arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane because then his time had come, but not now. He goes to the place where John the Baptist had baptized and we are reminded of John's testimony concerning Jesus. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only who is at the Father's side, has made him known. And finally, let's just go back to that rather throwaway comment of Jesus in verse 35. And the scripture cannot be broken. Jesus is reminding us that scripture is authoritative, inerrant and inspired. All of scripture points to the Messiah, the Christ, as being God, God incarnate the Word made flesh, our Saviour. Sometimes we might think of what it would have been like to have been alive in the time of Jesus, to sit at his feet and listen to him, like Mary. But would we have done? I hope that we would. But I don't think I would have earlier in my life. Many people saw him, saw his miracles, heard his teaching, but still did not believe. They had hard hearts and closed eyes and ears. As for the early part of my life, I did. I'm sure that many of us <coughs> Pray for friends or family who do not yet accept Jesus as their saviour. Maybe it would be good to pray for the Holy Spirit to soften their hearts and open their spiritual eyes and ears. And once we recognise Jesus as our Lord and saviour, we realise that we must serve him with everything we have with the whole of our lives. Amen. So let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you that you sent your only Son to be our Saviour, to be God incarnate, so that we can see from his example how you want us to live our lives. We pray for those who do not yet know Jesus, that through the power of your Holy Spirit, their hearts may be softened and their spiritual eyes and ears opened so that they may accept and believe. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. God bless Africa. Protect our women and children. Transform our leaders. Heal our communities. Restore our dignity. And give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit be with you, all those whom you love and for whom you pray, now and always. Amen. So, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. With lots of love to you all, stay safe. See you again soon. Goodbye. Keep the key.